Let's talk about the future builder. So what is the future builder for? What do you need it for? And how can you use it? So I have a Flutter application and before I can actually use the different screens of the application, I need to get data from the internet or establish a session to uh, call APIs. So I need to initialize my application to make sure it runs smoothly. I don't want to retrieve data from the internet, which is an asynchronous call and I don't know how long it will take when I uh, build up the screen in my application. Also, Flutter doesn't allow it because it's asynchronous and everything that's asynchronous in the build function will be just uh, started but not ended. A common pattern in applications is like an animation, an hourglass or something that shows you the app is doing something, it's waiting for information from the internet and once it got that information it will start to show it. So how do we do that? Future Builder is the answer. In my case I don't want to try to show something on a screen if it fails uh, I end that with a horrible error message. Instead, I want to initialize my application to make sure there are as few errors during the runtime as possible. In my simple example, I just need to establish a session or ensure my credentials are still valid with an API gateway of uh, AWS and then I retrieve data to show it. So the way I want to do this is while establishing the session, I show a splash screen that just shows something is happening and once that is done I move on to a different screen and show the display data or in case of an error I move on to an error screen. So how do I do that? The state of the asynchronous action which is shown here on the top is represented in a future and with the future builder I can render the screen based on the state of a future. So while the established session action is still in progress, I will render the splash screen and once it is completed I will render the screen again, uh, check the result of established session if it's an error or if it was successful and then move on to a different screen. Let's have a quick look to VS Code and look at an example. Here's a build function of my app so I have a couple of routes and my initial route points to a splash screen and after that my second screen after the initialization is completed will be location screen. Here's my splash screen. My splash screen has three different visualizations each returning a scaffold. One returns a circular progress indicator, a spinning wheel showing that it's still working. Alternatively it can uh, show a text error or a text completed. I have defined two functions to move on to a different screen after the screen is built up. One registers a callback function because you cannot change the route throughout building the build function. So you can register a callback after the build is completed and this is the move on after build and move on is a function that is called once the build function is completed and here I just navigate to a different page. In my future builder I start the asynchronous call, in this case I initialize my Cognito session. I have a build function that defines which visualization to choose. So here I check if my snapshot which refers to the state of the returning future of initialize cognito has an error. In that case I visualize the screen as an error screen and I register a callback to move to a different route which reflects an error screen. Alternatively if it's complete I show the complete text. I move on after build so after construction is complete I move on to the next screen to really be in the application and I initialize the next step in the app initialization which can run in parallel. If it's still running then I show the spinning wheel with the build splash screen method. Now the future itself, the asynchronous method, needs to return a future string and in this case just initializes a cognito session. So 
So you see the three steps upon loading. First, it shows the uh, spinning wheel, the splash screen. Then it shows completed, and then it navigates to the next page. I hope this video helped you to use the future builder. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel.